Testing. Test. Me, my, mo, me, mo, mo. Test, test, test. Ah. Everybody, welcome back to Whiskey and Wi-Fi. We are drinking season seven. Uh, get it at your local liquor store, your state-run liquor store. I still find that funny about Pennsylvania. <laughs> Not that we're from there. <laughs> well, they know we're from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, in Pennsylvania, you got to get your liquor from a state store, so that's kind of annoying for me. After living outside the state for a little while, it just seems. Well, how are you? Bullshit. Guys? Yeah, it's, bullshit. it's a little bullshit. But anyway, we're drinking, so we're happy, right? If we want to, if we want to talk about that, I think what... Not that I'm, not that I'm opinionated, I think all my ideas are a good idea. Well, sh that's, but if you know. have a state and they're going to buy all the liquor and be a large buying group, you'd think we'd have the lowest prices, but we don't. Oh. You go everywhere. Every state that touches us has lower prices for alcohol. <laughs> it makes no sense. That doesn't make any sense. It's mm -hmm. like if they're... If it's economies of scale and... Scale. We want our Seagrams cheap. Yeah. Damn it. You think they'd be good at that? I never want to go fly planes like Harrison Ford. Because <laughs> that he was drunk. <laughs> That's what they're not saying. Harrison Ford, Ford. drunk, trying to get drunk and on several different <laughs> prescription drugs. <laughs> Harrison Ford, I love him for Indiana Jones and oh yeah, I love him almost everything. And he has an earring. And he has an earring. And have you ever seen him on those talk shows? Like late night talk shows. I'm he, sure he's brilliant. He seems high. He like off his mind. He probably doesn't give a fuck either. <laughs> He's got a lot of money. He's got enough money for an old World War II plane straight from Indiana Jones. <laughs> God bless him. Yeah, but he's I'm glad he's fine. He's fine. That's Didn't he like, break his pelvis or something? I, I know he... I mean, he's fine. He's survived, <laughs> yeah. but he's not Everyone's fine. like, <laughs> Everyone's like it's okay. He almost uh, died. <laughs> He'll never be the same. He's going to walk with a limp. That's a good point. Like, I, I have not even... Like, oh, he's fine. That's how I'm putting it. Like, he's still the same person. He still has lots of money. He's had <laughs> a good life. Okay. He's had a good time. <laughs> uh, so so what you do he with says I'm Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Does he already have one? I don't know. He's kind of old. Um, oh. What'd you do with your snow day? Did you have a snow day this week? No. no. You, oh, you didn't take out? Well, we had we got out early, so that was nice. Oh, yeah, we still. Yeah, I took the day off, and then I realized snow days are kind of terrible because there's nothing to do but watch daytime television. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna go read a book. Because it was just... Oh, that's a good thing. Though. Yeah. It's kind of nice getting snowed in sometimes. I like getting snowed in, but there's a while there I'm trying to find out what I needed to do because I was bored. I'm just like, what do I do now? Could have played with your nephew in the snow. Oh, he has a nap time. So for those three hours I was bored. and I was trying to watch, just unwind and like watch TV and veg out. Like, hey, the snow day. I'm what you should have done was whatever room he was in taking a nap, <laughs> should have shut the door. Going already. <laughs> He's got to look on his face, everybody. <laughs> and then made a wall of paper and put snow <laughs> between the door. Well, it depends on which way the door swings. Mm -hmm. That'd be funny if he came out and there's just a wall of snow. And he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> would that scare him at his age? Do you think, do you think that was like just I think he would love it. He'd be like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> run through <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. He just makes a mess and loves it. It's funny how a little kid loves snow, though, right? Oh, I mean... I mean, I used to love snow, it's too. It's awesome. But I love watching kids play in the snow. How amazed they are with this white powder that fell from the sky. <laughs> it made everything... You know, you can make snowballs and snowmen. Yeah, I was shoveling out the alleyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and these little kids were, like, playing it and having the best time ever. This one little girl would just follow him. She's like, I'm stuck in there! And it's like, she's loving it. I'm just like, I fucking hate this. God damn it. Sorry, this guy. It's been three fucking months. Yeah. I mean, not that I, I was glad they were having fun. But at the same time, I was like, fuck this. <laughs> exactly. Fuck the snow. Yeah. But, like, you know, last week we said snow proves that climate change isn't happening. So. But we're not going to worry about this week. The climate is always changing. Yeah. Here we go again. <laughs> Round two climate change. No, Rodney. Drill, baby, drill. 
Well, what if it snowed in Israel? That's going to be one of our topics this week. Nuclear uh, snow. New- <laughs> oh, dark. No, I don't want that to happen, but it gets nerve-wracking seeing how yeah. they're surrounded by people that hate them, and they keep picking everyone. But they have the nukes. Everyone else doesn't have the nukes yet, which is what we want to talk about. I guess this is one of our issues. We're going to do current events this week, because there's a lot of stuff going down, and we're getting a little antsy. We're getting a little, uh, like, oh, is are we getting into a bigger conflict here? I know we talked about that a couple weeks ago. But it's still happening. It's always happening. It's always we didn't start the fire. I think uh, We didn't start the fire. We didn't start the fire. Okay. Oh, well, we already went over the fifth. I'm like, like Cartman. We started that song. We went over the limit. Going. Now we're going to get a cease and desist letter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good catch, Rodney. Good catch. But yeah, I think we need to write. I like to be called Rod. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rod. What is it? Thick. That's the thing, it's too intimidating. Just Put it to on rod. thick, Derek. It's the visual I get. I'm just so oh, emasculating. <laughs> anyway, current events. Uh, current events this week, we want to touch on um, Netanyahu coming and speaking to Congress this week. Uh, the president didn't invite him. John Boehner did. The House John speaker. Boehner. John fucking Boehner. <laughs> That's how he wants you to say <laughs> he tell you, He's got that face. Whenever he's not crying for reasons we can't understand, he's usually got that face on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, is that a slap in the face of the president, do you think? I don't know. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a valid <laughs> opinion to have. <laughs> I, I yeah, I mean, it might be, good, but I don't follow politics enough to know if it even is or it isn't. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. What? what? So if he's coming over here and telling us we've got to kind of be tougher on Iran and not negotiate. Like, Give us more of that internet money. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And trying to get us on, stop negotiating with Iran, give them some nuclear power that's not dangerous because they're worried they're going to get the bomb. And a lot of people think it's just... Or the missile. Or, you know, the, the, or the UMD, suitcase bomb. Or the chemical weapons, or the biological weapons. Which, I mean, I guess those are real problems, but... I don't, yeah. That's the thing. We don't want Iran to actually get a bomb, right? I mean, it seems like it'd probably be better if there were less bombs in general. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I saw something in my research this week where it's like... I think Israel refused to deproliferate when other people were negotiating too, so. But that's the thing, we were just discussing this. They are surrounded by people that that's hate the them. They are, they are literally just surrounded by people. I don't know why I laugh after I say that, because it's like, it makes you really feel uncomfortable. You're like, oh. How do we get with this? We don't know, we're scared. I'm glad I'm surrounded by at least other Americans. And yeah, that's the counter argument, I guess, it's just like, Israel almost has to be that way, because like if Mexico and Canada were like, wanting to destroy America because of religious reasons or just wanted to destroy us, we'd be fucking paranoid and kind of want to make sure our big brother, if you will, would you know, be backing us if we went to war or something like that to protect ourselves. Yeah, I mean, maybe we just need to figure out a way to build a new piece of land somewhere and just give that to them and say, we're going to move you. <laughs> And then I, in this, in this <laughs> Middle East, you guys find it that worse? I thought of it like... And they're like, no, it's a sacred land. It's like, I get that. I get it. <laughs> no, here, here's my thing. I think... New well, sacred land. Somebody gets together in the back dark rooms of the government and just like, all right, here's what we tell. We, we tell them that we've been just reading the Bible for like the last 2,500 years. <laughs> this whole Jerusalem thing? Really? Oh. <laughs> you tell them it's like, it's, really? like, it's Missouri. <laughs> I'm more people believe that. The United, somewhere in the United States. Yeah, just like, come here. Just everyone come here. Let's live peacefully together. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Let them have that chunk of land. It's, you know, it's fine. We'll just live there. Yeah. But, uh, such a weird situation. Oh, uh, it's scary, man. We can't, uh, we want to bring up that we talked about uh, Boko Haram. The first week of the show, and now they're like, "Yay, I see this. We're officially on your back oh. now." So hey, and that's what they do. And we just kind of thought okay. that, oh yeah, this. we saw that happening, and now it's officially happened. So that's a little bit of a whiskey and Wi-Fi update. <laughs> Coming to you live. <laughs> we'll just Google that shit. Google it. <laughs> whiskey and Wi-Fi using Google because you don't want to. <laughs> Brought to you again by Seeger Seven. <laughs> 
You should just edit that out. <laughs> no, that was too good. <laughs> we don't edit we're the show. We don't, we don't edit the show. Uh, what, what, other you current, are, uh, what other current events do we have? I, well, I think it's a good time to talk about our top Reddit headlines. Oh, here we go. Yes, I was excited for these. First and foremost, American and Israel military advisors were arrested while aiding Islamic State terrorists in Iraq. This was posted by I Love Hezbollah. So I don't know about credibility. <laughs> I think we should take him pretty seriously because he might blow us up. <laughs> Another one is an Indian rapist lawyer claims banning Valentine's Day will prevent rape. <laughs> that isn't. <laughs> that's not funny. It should be a subject you laughed at. It just, that, could you imagine a lawyer standing up in front of a judge? <laughs> that? It's just the headline reads so ridiculous to me. Indian rapist. <laughs> yeah, Indian <didn't> rapist. <laughs> Where? I think it's because of Valentine's Day. I see all the pink got me really horny. Uh, uh, you really shouldn't do this, guys. Uh, believe me, I know where. That I'm guy should definitely just go to jail. Yeah. It's just like you're going to jail for having such a terrible excuse. Please stop talking. <laughs> yeah. Go to jail. Do, yeah. Not, do not pass go. <laughs> Shoot him. Uh, we we done a poll. Well, that was in the country Shoot. of India, not like. <laughs> yeah. I like I didn't say the state of Indiana or anything. I mean, to Indiana, <laughs> chicken fucker. And uh, <laughs> and in Australia, protesters attempt to crash an international Women's Day lunch held at a men's only club. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> but it was, this is the <laughs> kicker: is that it was women trying to get into the international Women's Day lunch. But because it was in a men's only club, they could not get in. <laughs> Which is like, wait, how does that happen? <laughs> Whose idea was it to have the International Women's Day lunch? <laughs> the only way you could get in was if you were a guest of oh a member. God. Which, yeah, like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> was like, Attention, everyone. <laughs> when you live in a world where that's happening, <laughs> oh, what's going on? That was, I think, in like Brisbane. Brisbane. That might not have been in Brisbane. I should have looked that up. Google it! <laughs> Google that shit! Hey Steve, my five will be right back. See how I'm saying? Google what it says, dude! It's correct. It is correct! Yay! We're gonna slowly turn into everything we hate about radio. <laughs> Buzzers! Loud noises! <laughs> fart noises! Speaking of farts, I feel like I just shit my pants. <laughs> Poop jokes! <laughs> Whiskey, Wi-Fi. Well, I think we have more energy today because it's Sunday. We had a, we had that snow day, so we had to wait till Sunday to record. Oh, and now we lost that hour. The fuck. fuck! The fucking bullshit. <laughs> it's time saving. It's thing. bullshit. Yeah, Roddy is really. I'm up. fired up. Rod is hot. I am fired up. Rod is hot. Oh, so hot. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we, we kind of so hot because we're low on energy, so we're just so low, seven and low up. on energy. And now you're low on energy. You know what? Your mom's low on it. Oh, that's not nice. I'm <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. My mom would kick you in the nuts. <laughs> it was just supposed to be a mom joke. It was nothing to your mom right, specifically. Right. They'll understand. And I'll have to tell her every other three hours. Ronnie doesn't hate you. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> oh. What are, we, okay. some, what are some other current events that aren't on Reddit? I feel like we need to move away from Reddit. <laughs> Reddit is not a very trustworthy source. <laughs> there are some good sources, but that was our point was you have to read to see who posted them. I remember just what I wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, so Putin killed a guy, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, it seems like that's the logical uh, choice of who done it. Who done it? <laughs> Um, but there are fringe, <laughs> fringe media outlets which have also suggested that it's possible that the CIA, or the CIA, the CIA may have done it in order to disrupt things over there, which seems ridiculous. Um, yeah, yeah, it's one of those ridiculous outliers. <laughs> like, yeah, you want to believe it because you want to watch like that spy movie happen. Yeah. But you're like, nah. <laughs> well, I have no choice. The guy running shit didn't really like this guy. Yeah. And, 
The video. Uh, did you watch any of the video from the bridge? I didn't watch the video. Uh, you don't see him being killed. You just see this truck pulling up at perfectly the block when he got shot from like the only security camera on the bridge. And it's done right beside the Kremlin, so it's like if yeah, anyone would like, know where the only way to block it, it would be. Yeah, it's like that was very choreographed. <laughs> But whoever did so it. So wait, the van pulls up? Well, it's pulls actually away a street sweeper. So, or like a snowplow. It's something that should legitimately be there at the time. So, but it's big. And you see him walking. And literally as it goes out of view, like it blocks the people's view. Like within a second, you just see like somebody running away from the murder scene and getting into a car and driving off. And he's just like, oh, that's shady. <laughs> wow, that is so crazy. But... I mean, I read that it, I read articles that said this was a pretty legitimate hit, like yeah. pretty well planned out. Four shots in the back, pretty it's, good shot. Uh, you, it's one of those things. Well, the thing I found interesting about it was, so yeah, it was Boris Nemtsov's Nemtsov's Boris Nemtsov. He was shot four times in the back. He was pretty shot famous. Shot four times in the back. In the back. No back. <laughs> Yeah. But he was on camera saying to an American uh, doing like a history show, and he's just like, I think I'm protected because I'm famous. If they kill me, it'll be obvious. Like he didn't say it outright, but that's kind of like the, from what he said, that's what you get from that. He's like, I'm not worried about getting killed because I'm famous. And it was, it, we got killed on Sunday right before a big demonstration, and it was just like, was that Putin sending a signal? It's like. Say what you want, I will kill you. Or it's like, we will fuck you up. Like, it's just one of those things that, especially in America, you, you kind of take it for granted. Like, oh, governments can do evil shit like that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, not that would happen, but it just looks, you know, like, oh, that's what happened. Pretty suspect. Yeah. But is Hillary going to get hit? For these emails that are being released all of a sudden. Oh, her Hillary Billary. Hillary slash Billary. <laughs> <laughs> the Billary is coming back to the yeah. White House 2016. Liberty. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. But <laughs> you like that? No, I like the way you said that. It was a nice little oh. shortcut there. I don't know. Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? I'm not really sure, but it seems like it's a little weird that she wasn't using the official email when you're Secretary of State. Like, I do think it's a little strange. You'd be like, yeah, you should probably be re using the secure email from. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the side of, like, I have Hillary goggles on sometimes. Because, like, Benghazi happened, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. You just mismanaged it. But sometimes, like, bad shit happens. That's how I put it in my mind, so I wouldn't worry about it so much. And now this comes out, and I kind of want to do the same thing, but like, there's the rational part of me saying like, this doesn't look good, this is not, you no, know, what's happening? <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, well, the other thing, and I don't, I, I don't know how credible this was, because I should have, I should have looked this up again, so I forget where I found this, but it, <clears throat> I found an, a website which was showing someone had hacked her email, but I don't know if that was a fake thing, that could have been fake, but it seems like it's for security purposes. Mm -hmm. This should be something that at least is scrutinized to a degree because it seems like something that shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Because like, there shouldn't be this precedent set where it's like, oh yeah, just use your own email and. Yeah, that's really bad. I think that should be corrected. Be like, no, we're not going to allow this anymore. Like everyone's got to. Yeah, you got to kind of have that transparency. Right. And see what's going on. But what do you think? It do you think it hurts her run? For me, like I. I see the candidates lining up to run, and there's not many on the Democrat side. I just feel like it's Hillary or bust. <laughs> That's <laughs> but really if she goes down right now. I hope it brings her down enough where there are some other names in the hat because I think there's, I mean, this name gets thrown around a lot, but I, I would much rather see Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Um, and uh, Saturday Night Live actually mentioned her outright. That might give her another boost. And she's like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And it's like, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so many pe I think she has a better voice. I agree with a lot of. Her. I don't agree with her on a lot of things, but compared to, Hillary, oh, I just don't know. I just don't want another Clinton, <laughs> or I don't want another Bush really either. Yeah, it's we like, got it's Jack like Bush. Like Bush or Clinton again? It's like fuck. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like you, my dad's a Republican. And it's it's okay. Say. That's not that's not the end of the world, Derek. Uh, We're not. Republicans yeah. aren't always terrible people. No, he's a good person, but it, <laughs> it's just funny. You said that, you're like, oh, it was like, but you had the heroin addict. 
<laughs> I can't believe it. I don't know how to change it. Uh, uh, talk to my friends about uh, this. I can't, no, it's, it's going to funny. support. <laughs> okay. I think people for the left do treat some like Republican thought like a disease. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, you got Republicans. <laughs> they want to put you in rehab. So, I mean, I'm just saying that's a thing that's happened. But anyway, well, my point was, um, even my dad was just like. I can't believe they're getting Jeb Bush like that. <laughs> He's just like, what are they doing? <laughs> He's uh, bilingual. He's bilingual. That's a, I think that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. It's I just that. I mean, I'm not saying that that's the reason you should become president. But <laughs> we haven't had too many other people run for president that are really good at speaking Spanish, have we? I think so. And it seems like that's getting to be a pretty large chunk of the uh, oh, yeah. population. So if you can connect that with that, happen. that's a big... They have a few deal. Latino, I'm just using that because I don't know exactly what their nationality, but candidates recently in some primary elections getting, isn't Marco Rubio, isn't he like, is he running? He'll probably run, I think, or he wants to, I think. I think I'm like, just not know what the fuck I'm talking about, which is <laughs> a pretty common trend around here. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Is this on? <laughs> You're putting this on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I really wish you weren't putting this on the internet. Uh, I'm going to go on record again. I do not support this message. <laughs> See, I'm suffering the best of wishes. Oh, man. And so is Gentleman Jack, as well as Canadian Club. Or. And we had, uh, oh, Red Label. Johnny Walker. Oh, yeah, little Johnny Walker. Any of them. <laughs> if they want to start supporting the show. Or if we have any fans who want to just send us a bottle. Whiskey and Wi-Fi at gmail.com. Email us. We'll give you our address. <laughs> <laughs> the FBI is like, all right, we got it. We're going to get it. <laughs> Fuck these guys. Oh, um, man. Yeah, someone just sends us a box full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> a literal box full of shit. It's like, oh, so, okay. you earned this. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Send us a care package full of fine whiskey. <laughs> yeah. This bottle just stuffed with human shit. <laughs> Pull a flag. Like it's Jack Daniels. <laughs> Drink this. <laughs> Die. Oh. Anyways, yeah. back to uh. Do we? Do we? Do you have any other thoughts on Hillary? Or is um, it, I'm just back to talking about shit. Yeah. <laughs> it might not be a big deal. I don't know. I don't. So let's get to our bigger topic. Oh. Uh, as a tease, we got we to discuss one more current event. Um, the Koreans, um, our ambassador got like cut this week. I thought that was a pretty big story. He got cut in South Korea. And he got cut shaving? Or what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, and now we're real pissed at North Korea. No. You guys should have better razors. <laughs> if only you had better razor blades. The story is he's just, you know, he's in this building, you know, doing his ambassador stuff, and the guy comes up, tries to cut him. And they tackle the kitchen, kitchen for me. And he had this week uh, Kim Jong Un, that little man toddler, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> he looks like a child to me, like a, like a punk little toddler to me. He's got <laughs> like a, it's like a, a human porpoise. <laughs> like a seal standing on its like a flipper or something like that. That's ridiculous. But um, yeah, he was you know, threatening war with the U.S. or doing more of that war speak with the U.S. <laughs> we will get a bomb that will reach you. And, well, they are getting, the report is they're getting weapons to... Well, at least we're over here. Well, yeah, we're still out of range. We're like, yeah, you can talk, <laughs> talk, but... Good luck, <laughs> California. <laughs> but, uh... Good luck, California. They're talking about, like, reaching Japan, maybe, with some kind of deadly weapon. Of course, deadly. But like, no, it's a weapon <laughs> that just gives weapon you good mass. feelings yeah. of mass hilariousness. <laughs> it's laughing gas. <laughs> well, we've talked about that before, about that being a much better weapon. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Or it's just like, oh, just make everyone love you so much because you give them all the good shit. Yeah, just give them candies and like whiskey. iPhones, whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if they did just drop whiskey and <laughs> iPhones? Man, we could get lots of sponsors just from that. What if we just dropped Jack Daniels and solved all the world's problems? <laughs> <laughs> no, if you really think about it, I bet that would work so much better. But a bunch of booze. <laughs> just keeps drinking. <laughs> Everyone's too drunk to feed themselves eventually. Like, oh shit, we've got the farm. <laughs> they just drop food. 
Oh, you mean, I thought you meant all over the world, like if everyone was drunk all the time. Or just everywhere. Yeah. I mean, forget everyone addicted to Coca-Cola's and McDonald's. McDonald's and whiskey. <laughs> like, <doing> here? <laughs> like I said, after a while, everybody, drink? everybody would like take a nap and wake up after being too drunk and just be like, oh shit. We forgot to run the power plant. <laughs> we got a few dollars of babies. <laughs> they can't drink whiskey. What? No, I meant just that the parents got too drunk and didn't feed the babies. Oh, that's sadder. <laughs> Why, Rod? <laughs> yeah. You ever seen the movie Train Spotting? I have. Like that scene? That's an intense scene. That whole movie's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool? Well, yeah, it's fun to watch. You think that movie's cool? It was a good movie. Yeah, like it's entertaining. And if anyone wants to watch that movie and follow up and tell us how cool it is, <laughs> when you watch this baby die because everyone's doing heroin, maybe is that the one where the baby is on the ceiling? Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought that was the right movie. It's cool for that perspective. Like to have a baby dead on the ceiling? No, but <laughs> getting that psyche. It's very well done. As a, a film critic, uh, I think it's just, uh, in the 90s, it was a very revolutionary way to tell a story, then it was very successful. In time. <laughs> That's what made it cool. The way it was exactly shot. Cool. The way it was shot, the story matter. was presented. I want to yeah. fucking punch you in the face right now. <laughs> Odd, man. I'm sorry. So, well, here's the thing. ISIS, it turns out, you know, they're probably drunk all the time, and they're inviting women into their whole regime in scanty clad outfits and this story about them being very... They're doing the hanky-panky? Probably. They're probably getting drunk, doing coke and, you know, hanky -panky. killing people. Hanky. Oh. Well, that's what they do. I thought they were hanky-panky. Well, I mean, beforehand. What the are point the women is, for? What are the women for? That's what I'm talking about, the hanky-panky. They kill the women too? Oh, no, no, no. They just try to get them to, you know, support the cause. But the thing is, People were saying how, you know, fundamentally Islam they are, or Islamic Muslim they are. And President Obama has been like, we're not at war with Islam. And some people are like, bash Islam because these radicals believe in this, and that's why they're destroying the world. And he's like, no, you don't understand. These people are just assholes that are drunk and don't actually believe in or know what they believe in. I thought that was a very powerful message that came across this week. So as we're talking about all this world turmoil in our current events episode this week, I think it's important to understand that our enemy isn't a religious idea, maybe. And it's just these assholes are blowing the world up. But I guess I did want to eventually get to a conspiracy corner about world religion. What the fuck are you saying, Derek? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still with you. But, um, yeah. I'm kidding. I was with you that whole time, but... I just didn't know what to say. <laughs> now you, you threw it off. You looked at me like you, you were going to Conspiracy Corner with prophecies, right? That's right. I think you told me about where you wanted to go. <laughs> so this this week, week, this the week, way you were doing that really uh, <laughs> turned me on. This week, a Conspiracy <laughs> I would... Oh, <laughs> turn that's your place. <laughs> <laughs> this week I wanted to talk about a problem I see. In ISIS, because uh, the reports are like they believe this is the end times, um, so they're acting as if, like, the, well, the religion believes, like, oh, the world has to basically be fucked to hell before their savior it comes back. It's it's like it's surprising. <laughs> this is going to be all of our end times because we keep provo <laughs> provoking everyone <laughs> around with machine guns. We keep throwing <laughs> bullets in the air. Yeah, it's like, and then we scream, everyone's going to die. <laughs> and, and keep murdering people, and you don't think. Yes, it is going to be your end time soon. You're right. Yes, it is end times for you. Yeah. You're going to get blown up yourself when you keep warring. Yep, you're right. You are correct, sir. You got that one right. It was a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. Yeah, you keep shooting at people, someone's going to shoot back and kill you. But that, that's the kind of thing I would attach to it. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy thing. So the conspiracy that I mean, if you shoot at people long enough, someone might shoot back and kill you. <laughs> that's just a fact. Uh, but the conspiracy Back to the streets, <laughs> the hard streets. Rod's been there. Rod's lived on those streets, and you don't even want to tell. The streets of the Tucky. <laughs> in the Tucky. In the Tucky. <laughs> you should make a CD. In the Tucky. In the Tucky. That's yeah. I'm just doing. Shoot in the streets in the Tucky. 
Little shoot back and kill your ass. <laughs> Do not shoot at somebody or they will shoot back. <laughs> <In the tongue. laughs> okay, so what were we talking about? <laughs> self yeah, self fulfilling. Self -fulfilling. Self -fulfilling. Like, the conspiracy is um, do people who have these strong religious beliefs, like the Zionists, really? Because um, we have the four blood moons happening right now, which a lot of Zionists, if you will, are freaking out about. Because every time you have these four blood moons, something happens with Israel. And now that people are like, oh, Israel's trying to slap America around and tell us how to get in this next war, and it's like, is something going to happen there? But here's the conspiracy. People are worried that they're trying to do it on this timeline because they believe in this prophecy, and like, oh, this is supposed to happen by September. So are they acting in a way to religiously fulfill these things and do dangerous things? And Who how knows? bad is that for society? Who knows? My point is, like, we got to not think that way as rational human beings in 2015. We're not rational. <laughs> well, that's the problem. It's like, <laughs> why are you people doing this? That's irrational. <laughs> Would any of this be going on? That's true. We wouldn't have anything to talk about. I think what, I think what needs to really happen is going back to the, the, the care packages filled with love is it's just drop a bunch of ecstasy over that entire region. <laughs> and what will happen with this blood moon thing is that they'll just be turning this giant orgy. With those fucking change brains out. At the end of the fourth blood moon, the orgy, we shall fuck. We shall fuck. And then, let's just start it in and all this. You know, they'll all have these babies together, and there'll just be this inbred mess of, of the Jews and the Muslims and everyone. And, and everyone will just be fucking so hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can't fucking the, kill each other the anymore. The Great Rebirth. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. just fucked our way through I'm this problem. I'm tagging this episode, The Great Rebirth. <laughs> coming September 24th, 2015. That's what should really Monday. happen. It's, it should be an orgy. <laughs> just love and just sex. Keep and fucking. <laughs> That's the next plague. That's how the next plague starts. <laughs> like, they all die to herpes. Wakes up two thirds of the They population. all just fucking have syphilis. <laughs> and let there be syphilis. <laughs> Yeah, guys, just like, why did you do that? Keep something giving. <laughs> you guys, I told you not to do that. Syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like that was. Uh, no. Oh man. Halftime tempo. Civil War in Venezuela? Is that what's happening? I hope we don't get involved. No, I guess we wouldn't. We probably will. <laughs> After <laughs> war, we're like, ah, oh, how do we get involved? We're like, wait, so you get like a, a hotline. Like, oh, the war. Like, we're not there, what the fuck? <laughs> Some bullshit. We should be there. Paul Halliburton. I need help. <laughs> blow it up so we can blow it up some more. <laughs> or they say blow it up so we can rebuild it. Is that what they say? That, yeah, that, that's what we will. Uh, but we just blow it up some more. <laughs> blow it up so we can kill it again. Yeah, we started off with Israel, but did we touch the whole Palestine thing and how we feel about... Oh, I thought we were going to Venezuela. I feel like we just touched it. Let's go back to Venezuela. What else is happening in Venezuela? Even We didn't even discuss it yet. Well, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I guess the state's been <clears throat> taking over more and more of the uh, private sector, whether it's oil and gas, or I think even just price stabilization, price fixing in terms of the price of goods, just to try to hold everything together. Yeah. And the more and more they get involved, it seems like the more and more social unrest and instability it's causing. And uh, yeah, it seems like it's a real fucking mess, man. They're on the yeah. verge of collapse. The inflation rate was up at like 78%, the it's, highest in the world. Yeah, it's through the roof. It's, when I saw that, I was just like, wow, that's not good at all. <laughs> yeah, they used to export oil, and I think they're importing it again. Oh, yeah, we need to talk about that. Um, and the price of oil? The price of oil is really affecting everything. Yeah, because um, a lot of those, those countries, countries yeah. yeah, any of those countries that are oil producers, a lot of them because of the, the fact that oil <coughs> prices have come down because the supply of oil has been going up steadily, primarily because of the fact that the United States and Canada have been producing a lot more than they're used to. Um, and that compounds the issue that when you have more supply and the global demand is down, the global economy has been shrinking for the last few years. 
with that contraction, there's more supply than there is demand, so the price is down. And so these countries that rely on oil to sustain them and to be able to subsidize <coughs> their social welfare programs and their social infrastructure, they are having a lot of social unrest because they can't pay the bills anymore. Yeah, and there's certain voices out there that are suggesting that Middle Eastern oil interests are doing this on purpose to, you know, kind of send a message like, hey, we're, we still got control of this market here, so. Yeah, but what are they doing? Well, it's like you're saying that they're lowering their prices because they had, like, it's cheaper for them to produce it. They're not lowering their price. They're just not limiting I supply. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's more accurate. But if they yeah. would limit supply, they'd make even less money. Right. So that's, see, that's the thing that everyone's, like, a lot of people make that point. But when you look at supply and demand, there's more wells in the United States and Canada or North America than there are in the entire Middle East. Mm -hmm. And we're producing more. We've been producing, steadily increasing the amount that we're producing, while they have been actually decreasing the amount that they've been producing. So, I mean, the ones that are really to blame for this price drop are it's the United States and Canada. Right. I mean, if we weren't producing at the level we were, prices would go back up. That's true. They wouldn't take that tactic. But then, again, conspiracy corner, there's all these people are like, oh, uh, they're just doing this to kind of pop up the world. And but what are they doing? They're not doing anything differently. We're the ones doing it, something different. That's good. So you're, you're debunking that pretty well, which is good. Okay. I support. We come to you, Rod, for this information, and thank well, you for providing it. And for all of your future energy <laughs> information. Is that where you're going? I don't know. <laughs> My head hurts. <laughs> I blacked out. So, like I was kind of tugging at before. But this is all fucking bullshit? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> what specifically are you talking about? <laughs> The shit, uh, the shit has hit the fan. Yeah. What, what's going to happen here? We got Russia killing guys who are trying to criticize the government. It looks like North Korea wants to be a dick. Israel wants to go to war with Iran. Boko Haram is like, like, hey, we, we're with ISIS. We want to go to war with Ukraine. Yeah, and I'm sure Against there's people that want to the you know, deal with Syria and Iran, too, in our government. I mean... There are a lot of people supporting <coughs> Israel in our country. Yeah. I, I guess we need to talk about how it's like sometimes taboo to criticize Israel, just because it has kind of oh, a... Oh, you're going back there. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm like, the anti-Semites coming out yeah, of there. Exactly. Right now I'm an anti-Semite when I'm drunk, damn it. <laughs> It's true, he is. He is anti <laughs> His name's Derek Ferrer. Rod's not anti Semitic. <laughs> but it's like, uh, sometimes you see what they're doing, and you're just like, that's not right. And it's hard to express it without people coming down on you that way sometimes. Maybe that's just me being afraid to talk that way, but. Um, I think you're just an anti Semite. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so that's solved again. We go to Rod for all the information. <laughs> That'll be in our caption. It's like, Israel, Derek's really anti-Semite. Um, but I just found it interesting because Netanyahu has been to the country twice before to give us like the same speech where it's like, Iran's got the bomb. Um, or they're going to get the bomb next year and it hasn't happened in the last 20 years. It's his argument it's, that because of what we've been doing, it's kept them from getting the bombs, so that's why we have to continue doing what we're doing? Um, a little bit, but, which kind of makes some sense, but I feel like we have to negotiate with Iran if we ever want to, like, develop a working relationship with them. Like, we want them to evolve to be more like us, and by doing that, we have to at least negotiate <laughs> and talk to them. <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do with us? <laughs> well, they, they used to hate us, right? Yeah, right. I mean, they can hate us. But then they'll want to blow us up, right? Isn't that what we're afraid of? <laughs> I mean, I'm a, if you're going to play that card, then, I mean, look at what we're doing. We're the most warring country in the world. So, like, obviously, <laughs> there's a lot of people that will blow us up because we're killing lots of people. <laughs> it was like the uh, thing where you spray bullets everywhere. And it's like, oh, yeah, they're going to come back at you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at the country that has, like, 800 military bases across the world. <laughs> but... We're the good guys keeping order, so that's, that's a good thing. I mean, yeah, to a degree. Mm -hmm. I hope. 
I hope. <laughs> I hope we're on the right side. We're definitely on the right side. Right? <laughs> I'm on the right side. You say you're usually on the left side. Which is the left side. <laughs> Damn it. Touche. <laughs> what else is going on? <coughs> How's it going to happen? That's what we've been talking about. How's this going to start? This whole World War Three thing. Oh. Oh, we're going there. I mean, that's... Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. We are connecting the dots for everybody. I'll connect your dots, Peter. They're all leading to the apocalypse. Right? I don't know about the apocalypse. <laughs> Four blood moons. Death to all. <laughs> I don't know, man. It definitely seems like we're going to have a, a giant war at some point. And it might be called World War Three. Who, who's going to tick it off? I don't know. It seems like it's going to be that, China gonna be that uh, Pearl Harbor moment or that yeah. September 11th moment. That little... It's a powder keg just waiting for everyone to just be like, ah! All right, that's enough. And just go at it and people will take sides and we'll see what happens. That sucks. <laughs> China was the one kind of siding with Russia, telling uh, the Americans to back off of... Um, Shit. What is it? Tongue's back up? Ukraine. Oh, uh, is the Ukraine thing? Yeah. yeah. So that's always fun to have another big world player, one of the top five in the UN Council, telling you what to do. But you know, the UN's kind of neat for that because you got those like five super elites and well, I mean, how they regulate each other, and it's just like if we disagree, it it kind of holds when you have those five super elites just you know, with that power, you kind of know if they ever disagree to a point. It's just like, okay, we're going to go back to a world war. Like, it just feels like it's just there. I mean, well, everyone know, like, these people have to agree. These people are in power. And if you don't agree with what they're doing, it's going to be chaos. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I don't think that's, like, a constructive thing. It just, it just feels like that. It's crazy, dude. I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen, but it definitely feels like it's, the world's reaching that fever pitch where you're just waiting for that little this giant balloon that's just inflated and you're just waiting for that pin. To yeah. Have you ever saw the uh, scene, the atomic clock thing, where every year the kind the of... The doomsday clock? Yeah, the doomsday clock where it's like you're getting closer to midnight and the seconds or minute hand moves forward and backward uh -huh. based on how close... These right. experts and they're saying it's very close right now. It ticked up, I think, two minutes last year like when we flipped over to 2015. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> such a fucking weird-ass thing, though. It's, like, uh, who it's the fuck hard are you? to construct that. And, like, there are a lot of people that are saying that, though. Yeah. When you look at what's going on in the world, where it's just... Yeah. It's crazy. But um, unemployment's been dropping, right? It keeps dropping. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're doing good here in America recently. Thanks to Obama. Yeah. If you <laughs> if you believe those reports and if you discount the number of people that have completely dropped out of the, uh, the job market and you also discount the fact that most of the people that have been added to the job market are part-time employees mm. and uh, aren't, aren't getting good up. paying shut jobs hey. Hey. and they don't hey. have any benefits hey. and uh, hey. we don't have any good high-paying, long-term, <laughs> sustainable growth happening right now. Damn it. I mean, if everyone can be a waiter just, or a waitress, if everyone, just everyone can work at Applebee's 25 and hours Hooters. a week jobs will be fine. Yeah, at Applebee's and Hooters. Yeah. Because everyone couldn't afford to eat out. I was going to say, and then when people stop being able to afford to eat out, and then what happens? And then you were talking about the petrol dollar, and I just... For me, I feel like it's going to be an economic thing where something... It's going to go bad, and that'll weaken a superpower, and then their superpower will have leverage to kind of like, oh, they're weak now, let's strike. Or let's just do I mean, that's already been, We've already had, been <coughs> witnessing a currency war. I mean, that's been going on for the last few years. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see all these different central banks are just printing money, bailing out their bank to try to float their currency in regards to what we've been doing. I mean, I think we've been kind of the ones that have been forcing that issue and have been responding to the liquidity we've been dumping into the marketplace. That's true. Because we keep de debasing our, ourselves. Like, oh, we'd rather this much money do whatever. We bail ourselves yeah. out and everyone else does the same. And you can't keep, I mean, we're basically, we've been putting off a financial cycle that needs to just take place. There needs to be a, 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 sh a shift. And we're just making it worse. And it's going to be tricky. And I think something you brought up earlier that I thought was interesting that 
people who listen should maybe think about was that no one listens to this, Jerry. Yeah, whoever does. Um, Trust me. Coming from Rod, <laughs> no one listens to us. Um, or they've turned this episode off by now. Yeah, well, we'll cut it down and make it nice. We'll add music. <laughs> Adding some music. <laughs> and you were talking about how the interest rates were so low <laughs> for so long. And people were borrowing money to make these oil wells. Now we have the oil connection that you're making where Middle Eastern oil dropped their prices because they didn't drop their prices, it's All right, just right. supply and demand. Yeah. But I think you're saying something that made it sound like we used all this borrowed money and now I was like, oh, if they can't pay back their bills, or is that gonna go under? Is that gonna trigger something? Or is there a domino effect there? I don't know. I'm asking you <laughs> what you think. Say it again. Like you were saying, like, because the gas prices is lowering, right. some companies that were lending money cheaply because of this crisis yep. might not be able to pay on their investments because they can't compete. Well, it's interesting because a lot of the debt that even funded a lot of these new energy startups that have been taking advantage of this fracking and the tar sands in Canada um, and North America in general, they, uh, yeah, they, they're really over leveraged. They borrowed a shitload of money to get into business and they produce a lot less oil per well than a lot of the wells in the Middle East. Like a lot of people don't realize that there are more wells in, the, in North America than there are in the entire Middle East. And, but we just don't produce as much per well. They're less effective and the technology costs a lot more money to get the oil out of the ground. And it's less, I guess it's, I don't know the terminology, but it's not as rich. Mm -hmm. It's not as, uh, the oil that we're getting is not of the same quality as the oil they're getting over there either. And uh, so these companies, that you, they're so over leveraged, they're so indebted that they spun a lot of that debt off into securities and people invested in it. Thing is like AAA rated investments, kind of like, you know, you heard about the housing crisis when they sold off junk. Well, they did the same thing with the oil industry as well in the United States where they sold off these overpriced assets to people, schmucks like us. And so you have that compounding the issue too. So you have that wrapped into the financial industry. Yeah. But the fact that, so yeah, these companies are really over leveraged. So they have this debt to equity ratio that's really unsustainable. And the fact that that is all based upon really, really low interest rates. And so if interest rates actually become, start to normalize and start to go back up to where they should be, none of this equity would have gotten into these markets to begin with. And oil prices probably wouldn't have come down the way they did because they're being suppressed artificially low right now. And what you will probably see is you'll see oil prices and energy prices skyrocket and, and hyperinflation compound that issue. The fact that the dollar will drop in, in value dramatically and our buying power will, will shrink on top of the fact that we'll have to start importing oil rather than exporting it because it will cost us way too much money to do it the way we've been doing it, which has been held artificially low because of those low interest rates. Yeah. Sorry. that. That's why I wanted you to say because that heard you say it earlier, I'm like, yeah, that's a good thing to talk about, and people should know more about that, I think. I don't know if what I just said made any sense. If I it made sense it. to me. I, I was trying to think of maybe a way of summarizing it correctly. It's, like it's a really complex issue. Term, but it just seems like the competition will basically prevent people from paying back the loans they got, and it seems like we were allowed to make these risky investments again because money was so cheap to right. borrow. Yep. So that yeah, might money lead us to the next cost bubble money. like we've been talking about in last week. Oh, it's definitely gonna, it's definitely <laughs> the next bubble. You look at the stock market too and how much money has been led gone to the stock market. I mean, it's inflated the stock market to the values where it is today. This comp there's no reason for those for a lot of those stocks to be where they are. Right. Other than the fact that cheap money had nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. and, that's and when we have unemployment this low and we're getting part-time jobs and you see the stock market getting that high, just like, who's supporting that? Or how, how, where's that money coming from? Well, the funny thing is you look at the rest of the global economy and it's not doing well at all. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we just have this isolated little, but I mean, it's not like we have, yeah, going back to my previous point, we're not, we don't have good paying jobs. That's not where you're seeing the growth. Yeah. You're seeing the growth in a lot of lower paying, very little, um, real return for it, for it either. It's not like it's bringing lots of value. It's not like, oh, we're making things, we're designing things. It's, yeah, yeah, restaurant jobs. Not that, that's, not that that's not an important job and it's not hard. It's no. Not to undervalue it. 
Um, right. That was my <laughs> lefty view this week. I was like, well, this makes me feel good about the economic situation because I'm sometimes pessimistic about it. Well, you should and still be I, very and pessimistic. And then, like, as I'm, like, reading the article, like, the other part of my brain just like, you know, these are probably all part-time jobs. Because like, I observed that where we live, and, like, there's a lot of part-time jobs around, but there's not a lot of yeah. full-time work around. <laughs> okay, here's a little snippet. The U.S. population grew from February 2008 to February 2015 by 16.8 million people, or 5.5% increase in total population. And on a net basis, not a single one of those 16.8 million people got a full-time job. Well, I met 2.7 million were lucky enough to get a multiple or part-time job. Yeah. That's and that I seems like the more realistic version of what I see, at least in my small chunk of the world. And I've, I've been job searching for a lot of last year, but, I, you know, I'm a film major, so. But <laughs> there's different options for me. But I've been in the work pool where it's like I understand maybe the – the viewpoint of someone who's struggling. It's just That's why like, I'm independent filmmaker, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's some independent films. It's just like I understand the uh, the idea of like, oh, I want to have a good full time job, but there's none out there. Even there's there's been a stat saying there's a lot of college graduates coming out of school now, and they still can't find like work. That's, well, that's the quality. other thing is that a lot of the baby boomers in the older generation they're living longer and they're also working longer. So mm -hmm. a lot of them aren't retiring as soon as people thought. So they're not giving up their jobs as quickly. Those, those jobs aren't rolling over. Right. And yeah. so it's not like there's just new jobs every year. There's, you know, usually X number of jobs. There's a little bit of movement, but not very much. That's not good. But it's like you look at what's happening and how quickly it's spreading. Yeah. You're like, oh. Well, I found it funny this week when I was listening to AM radio like I do to get myself angry. The one guy was like, they believe this is the end of the world, and they're going to come after you with all we got. <laughs> this is how the guy talks. Yeah. <laughs> He's always yelling, I'm like, dude, calm down. But I listened to him just to get angry. Fuck but your shirts! Fuck your shirts! Your shirt. like, they believe the world must be destroyed completely. Save me, Jesus! <laughs> before their Savior comes back. And I was like, uh, you know that's Christianity too, right? <laughs> like, you feel like that's the same story. Do you story? understand the parallels here? Yeah, so I was just like, because he was kind of banging on Islam a little bit. And I'm like, they're, they're, they're not Islam really, because that's not the case. They're just assholes. <laughs> and then I just found it kind of ironic and hilarious that he's like, they want the rod the strong so the Savior can come back. I'm like, Wait, who are you talking about? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's an interesting point. It's like they're assholes. It's like you can look at any group of people and there's assholes. That's true. <laughs> and the people, the people are like, oh, you're, I'm, I'm not a racist. I'm not a sexist. Well, I'm an anti semite so you're a racist. <laughs> <laughs> Broad. <laughs> you're, no, that's your problem, not mine. I'm not anti-Semitic. <laughs> you are. But, uh, but I really don't like assholes. <laughs> and that's my point is there's assholes basically in any pocket. Some people probably call me an asshole. Probably right. <laughs> we're the assholes. <laughs> but where I was going with this is that if you focus on the assholes and you empower the assholes, it's bad, like, no matter what it is. There's a lot of asshole Christians. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Christians that are great people. But there are enough Christians where there are a lot of asshole Christians that are so extreme they want to fucking ki I mean, like, look at, uh, I mean, Nazis, a lot of them are, like, aren't they usually Christian? I think there was some kind of weird kind of hatred to Jews because of the Christian connection, maybe, like Mel Gibson kind of weird. Mel Gibson. Where he's but, like, the Jews killed Jesus. <laughs> Burn him. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to sing all Christians, but, or, or I mean, like, yeah, and then there's asshole Muslims that are, <laughs> we're talking about ISIS, that are, maybe a lot of people wouldn't even call them Muslims, but there's that. And there's asshole, uh, there's asshole white people yeah. that are racist towards black people, and there's asshole black people that are, there's assholes. And my fucking asshole. <laughs> Most of us are assholes. <laughs> but it's when we like generalize a whole group of people then based upon that group of assholes. <laughs> it's like all Muslims are bad. Yeah. Because of these assholes. Right. You made the point of like these guys are assholes. <laughs> and they're not and that's the point I was trying to get back to. It's like we that's that slippery slope where we're like, oh, we make these general statements where it's like, oh, oh, Muslims, anyone wearing a burqa and a that has a beard and likes a Quran is 
fucking gonna kill us all as a terrorist. No, <laughs> not quite. It's quite. Not quite, buddy. Sorry, I'll get off my little fucking um, stool. I like. I like the stand. Fucking assholes, dude. Fucking assholes. You're a fucking asshole, man. Fuck you. Yeah, man. This is the last show. This is the last show. This is never happening again. I fucking hate this show. You're probably an anti-Semite. <laughs> You're an anti-Semitic piece of shit, Derek. <laughs> Israel irks me sometimes. Not that I, they're still good guys. Like, good guys in the Middle East, but sometimes I'm just like, slow down. And Calm if down. any of our, uh, our Jewish friends would like us to take a different stance on any of these topics, Contact us and send us money, and we'll we'll. <laughs> <laughs>